Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine Games and Crazy Leela series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we're continuing our look at Leela playing with Knights Odds Against All Comers. This game was a game played on Lee Chess um, against an opponent rated 25.79. Leela is white, black is black <laughs> and uh, let's have a look how the game went. It was quite a stunner. So um, B3 started with, as I mentioned before, Leela plays all sorts of uh, first moves, all sorts of setups. It's um, pretty impressive, seems to generate uh, counterplay uh, in pretty much every single way. So knight f6, bishop b2, c5, and then f4. So um, we're into a, a sort of a birds, really, but with a, a knight on b1 missing. So... Um, now, the birds isn't normally such a good idea anyway. You would have thought with a, with a knight missing, it would be even worse. But Leela gets away with it. So uh, d5, knight f3, knight c6, and e3. And now a6 from black. Pretty sensible move, just stopping the uh, uh, the bishop from coming to b5, doubling up the pawns, putting some pressure on. It's a pretty standard thing for, um, uh, for white to do. Um, after a6, knight e5 played, which is quite interesting. So um, avoiding any pins with uh, bishop g4 and, um, yeah, I mean, just putting the knight on a good outpost. I mean, black takes, uh, I guess, a reasonably sensible decision. Exchange off some pieces when you're ahead. Um, it does give white um, um, an advanced pawn on e5. But on the other hand, this bishop isn't doing very much at all now. So, you know, it swings and roundabouts, really. d4 from Leela. Interesting one, that. I would have expected to, to try and keep that diagonal open, but Leela happy to go for for some sort of uh, collet structure, actually. You know, you often see this in the uh, Zucatort tole, co collet, where, um, you know, white plays uh, e3, b3, bishop b2, and then puts the knight on e5 later. It's all gone, you know, slightly different move order, but the structure is quite well known. So queen g4 from, uh, from white, pretty sensible, hitting the pawn on g7 there. Uh, black plays h5 just to chase the queen away. A little bit loosening, maybe. Um, queen g3 from white, just uh, keeping an eye on that one. And black plays g6. Straight away, you're feeling just a little bit nervous there with um, with uh, with black because, you know, after bishop d3, you've already got little ideas like bishop takes g6. So, yeah, this move h5 feels a, a little bit unfortunate there. But, OK, you know, uh, black's got uh, ideas. Bishop h6 played. I think if bishop g6, probably uh, black was intending queen g5 here. And queen g5, in any case, is quite a nice idea, hitting the queen hitting e3, which is why white plays the move uh, h4 here, just to stop that. But, um, <coughs> yeah, I mean, normally, uh, you know, Torch considers that, um, you know, the position without a white knight on b1 is four pawns up for black. Now uh, Torch sort of thinks that uh, white is three pawns down, you know. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, white's made a little bit of progress, but nothing significant. So queen e7 and then castles. And I mean, one of the advantages of not having a knight on b1, of course, is that you're slightly quicker to double up your rooks. So rook f3, rook f1 is coming in and f7 is going to be weak. So, you know, black plays um, uh, castles. You're going to need to protect that pawn on f7 sometime. But white keeps on going. Rook f3, b5 from black. And now rook a f1. And uh, yeah, I mean, to be honest, you know, storm storm clouds are gathering here. This is somewhat nerve wracking, you know, what um, what white has done. I mean, OK, white's, um, you know, a piece down. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of firepower um, aimed at that king side. And there's not a whole lot of uh, pieces defending it somehow. So black's got to be very, very careful here. Now, black actually played an extremely natural move here. You know, which um, um, which I think, you know, um, most human players would play in a flash if uh, with a little bit of calculation, once they'd understood that uh, sacrifices on G6, F7 for the moment aren't working. And that's the move C4. Hitting the bishop on D3, chasing it away. Right. I mean, if you go bishop E2, then suddenly there's a lot less pressure against these uh, these pawns. And black's got some, you know, some chances to uh, uh, to, uh, yeah, to, to consolidate the position. But this is falling to a, a horrible tactical trick. Really nasty, this one. 
and uh, of course this is what leela has been uh, looking at all the time you might want to uh, stop the video have a little look to see if you can find it it's a very nice tactical puzzle the uh, solution is bishop a3 so yeah bishop a3 we're uh, attacking the queen very very nasty um, of course the queen takes uh, on a3 but now white has rook takes f7 and uh, well i mean uh, we didn't have a knight on b1 we've given away our uh, dark squared bishop queen's bishop we've got rid of all of our queen side pieces but look we've got four attacking here and now that the queen's been drawn away well what have we got defending one this one's not doing that much knight's not doing that much either you can barely talk about any defensive pieces at all so not surprising that white's winning such a huge um um <laughs> somehow you know a huge uh, um advantage in development uh, an advantage in material on the wing that matters so um yeah this is pretty pretty desperate um black took on f7 with the rook and that's actually mate in eight. Not, not an obvious one, I have to say. But uh, queen takes g6. You can get quite away just by giving checks. Rook g7. Queen e6 check. King h8. Only move for black. Obviously, h7 is covered by the bishop. Queen uh, takes h6 check. King g8. Then we give a little queen e6 check. King h8. And now we go queen e8 check. And uh, yeah, I mean, how do you protect? Here we just take it. And after rook g8, then it's simply queen h5, king g7, queen h7, checkmate. White's a rook and a piece down, but well, what does it matter when you're giving checkmate? Um, yeah, just a really nice game again. And, you know, what I'm amazed about, you know, looking through all these games is just how different all the patterns are. You know, it's just, uh, you know, a b3 here and an f4, or a, you know, um it's just a, a d4 an e4 it's just incredible really what uh Lila is able to produce from pretty much every structure and i think that's a little bit different to um uh to the uh the previous uh incarnation of the Lila bot which was um yeah i think you know kind of relying on 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 a yeah a, a smaller number of uh of patterns i think this this leader is able to do anything in virtually any opening somehow it's really uh really incredible Hope you're enjoying this series. It's just little uh, snippets somehow, you know, uh, quick videos about these games. But I, I've, I'm playing through loads of them and I, I'm just really enjoying them. So nice. So um, if you like them, do give a like, subscribe to the channel, take a look at my new books. And uh, yeah, do keep your eyes uh, peeled as well for uh, new Mariotti videos. They're uh, happening as well at the moment. So uh, thanks very much for watching and see you at the next video.